in finding the position of women. But among Newton's main contributions that made a mark in history were the laws of motion, which described how most objects move from balls to cars and to carnets. Mankind thought the stars were beyond reach. Einstein's physics points to the stars. In 1905, Einstein showed something happens when things move very quickly at the speed of about one tenth of the speed of light, incorporating gravity into his theory of special relativity. In his work, changes man's view of space and time. In this video will be all about relativity, Einstein's theories of special and general relativity. And the essential question will be about how did Einstein theory of relativity change mankind's view of the universe? and the fact that weight disappears during the acceleration of free fall. Jump off a tall building and your weight disappears. You do not feel the pull of gravity in your body. You have become weightless. Where did the weight go? Or to rephrase the question, where did gravity go? Einstein's suspicion was that gravity has become something else. He believed that it had become acceleration. Gravity and acceleration were equivalent. Einstein was so confident of his idea that he declared that an observer in a windowless room would be unable to determine whether his weight was being created by the pull of gravity or the force of acceleration. This assertion had some profound Im implications for the existing view of gravity. Consider this, an observer watching a light beam in a dark motionless room not affected by the gravitational field would see the beam moving in a straight line across the room. If the room started to accelerate, the observer would feel force similar to gravity and would perceive the light beam as bending, thus explaining how the principle of equivalence worked. If Einstein was right that gravity and acceleration are equal, then an observer in a gravitational field should feel the force of gravity and see the light beam curve meaning that light, which is without mass, can be deflected by a gravitational field. This has significant implication with Newton's model of the universe. Einstein called this the idea of equivalence principle. So now, we're finally here at the last part of our video. We're going to talk about two competing theories about gravity. First is the Newton's point of view of gravity, and the next is the Einstein theory of gravity, or also known as general theory of relativity. First, we're going to talk about Newton's theory of gravity. So, what is gravity for Newton? Newton said that gravity is a force. It is something that pulls objects down, just like this ball. If I let go of this ball in mid-air, like that, it will automatically fall down towards the earth. It is going to follow a path of radially inward. 
towards the center of the Earth. What does the equation of Newton says? It only says that the force of gravity is equal to the gravitational constant times the first mass of the object times the second mass divided by or inversely proportional to the radius of separation of their distance or the distances in short. So now, let's talk about general relativity. So what is general theory of relativity? It is Einstein's theory of gravity that talks about how the sun, represented by this ball, curves the fabric of space and time. So what is space-time? Space-time is an intertwined concept of space, temporal terms, or spatial terms, with time that is temporal. Imagine this is the sun, and around sun, there are planets, just like the Earth. Earth orbits around the sun. So, we can say that the Earth is attracted to the sun. But Einstein said that it's not the way you think about gravity. Gravity is, work, is what works when the sun curves the fabric of space and time. So, the planetary orbits is the consequence of the sun making a curve on space-time. So now, let's talk about the equations. So, this is the Einstein field equations. So what does this talk about? The first part over there, before the one-half, is called the Ricci tensor. The Ricci tensor talks about this, the curvature of space-time in which a certain object is located. It is a contracted form of Riemannian tensor. Next is the negative one-half of the Ricci scalar times the metric tensor. So what is a metric tensor? It is a basis vector. It is a basis vector that forms a certain coordinates. A Ricci scalar is a contraction of the Ricci tensor, which is found at the first part of the equation. Next is the cosmological constant. Cosmological constant is found in the equation to adjust the certain discrepancies in comp computing the curvature of space-time. It is also responsible for the expansion or the construction or the bending of the universe, or simply the fabric of the cosmos. On the right-hand part of the equation is the 8 pi g over c to the fourth. All of this, this rational expression, is formed by constants. 8 is a constant, so is pi, which is 3.14159265358979323 in short. The next is the gravitational constant. We can also found this g calculated by Henry Cavendish in Newton's theory, which is the gravitational constant. A constant is found by Henry Cavendish in the late 1900s. The last, the lower part or the denominator of the rational expression is the c to the fourth, which is the speed of light 3 to the fourth power. On the right, in the last part, is the stress energy momentum tensor. This talks about how much matter is in the space time. So to speak, how many matter is moving or in motion within the cosmos. So what does this equation says? The left-hand side of the equation talks about how space-time is curved. And the right-hand part is how the space-time makes objects move. Okay? So what does the left part talk about? It talks about the curvature of the space-time that is produced by a certain matter. The right-hand part is how the matter is in motion within the universe. So, how to find which of them is right? There are centuries of experiment to refer to, but there's only one experiment which we can use to find which of them is right. And theories are supposed to make predictions. And we all know that Einstein's equation make the right prediction about gravitational waves. So, it's game over for Newton to talk about gravity. And Einstein wins the argument.